Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you three different ways to move around in Blender on a laptop without a mouse. I'll also be giving you the pros and cons of each method so that you can make a decision yourself on which one is best for you. Now, obviously having a mouse is gonna make navigating a whole lot easier. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's a wireless or corded USB or Bluetooth mouse, as long as it has one of these scroll wheels on here, navigating on a laptop is gonna be the exact same as a desktop. However, if you do not have a mouse or if you don't want to have a mouse, then this video is for you. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so this first method is called the walk method. And if you come up here to edit and preferences, and then over here on the side, we're under navigation, you can see that we have walk and fly. Now I don't suggest using fly because it was kind of weird when I tried it. It really reminded me of like slipping around on the ice where like not really being able to catch myself. So if you want to try that one, you just go ahead. It's uh, it's kind of fun, I guess. But um, for navigation, I really suggest using walk. We can also turn on gravity if you want, but unless you have like a full built out scene that you just want to walk through, I think for navigation, walk is the best. Now. We don't have to open this up every single time. It's just to kind of confirm that you wanna use walk instead of fly. So we can close this out. And just as a disclaimer, I am using a desktop and not a laptop for this demonstration because my laptop is so old that I think it would probably like crash and die if I tried to use a screen recording software while running Blender. So I'm using an iMac um, and that won't really affect anything that we're doing, but I just wanted to let you know that uh, I was not actually on a laptop, but I'm on a desktop. Okay, so the way that we enter into walk mode is we hit shift and tilde. And tilde is that um, little squiggly line right below escape. And so now that we've hit that, we are in walk mode. And um, I'm using my trackpad or mouse to look around here. And to move, it's very much like playing a game, like a computer game, like Minecraft or something. And I think that's the pro of this one where it's going to be really familiar controls for gamers. And so, you know, W moves forward, A moves left, D moves right, S moves backwards. Um, we can go down with Q and up with E. And if you hit shift, you can move even faster. So I think this will be really familiar for gamers. However, the cons for this one is when you're done moving, you have to click and that does not seem like much, but if you go to edit, let's say I move this around and now I need to get to the other side. So we have to activate it again. We've got shift and tilde. We'll move to the other side over here and then click to tell it that you're done moving. We'll grab this and move it over here. Now I need to get back over to the other side. So we'll uh, shift tilde again to activate it. And so it just gets to be a whole lot of extra movements that really add up time and it's just really annoying. However, if I didn't have like an actual mouse to use and I only had like a laptop trackpad, this would probably be the method that I would use, but we still have two more methods. So let's check those out. This next method, we're going to use this gizmo up here in the top right corner. And if you're unfamiliar with these lines, this red line is called the X axis and this green line is called the Y axis. And these kind of control like the width and the depth of your scene. And you can check these out up here in the gizmo. We have this green Y axis and the red X axis right here. Um, we also have this blue one here called the Z axis or the Z axis. And that really controls the up and down as well. And so the way that you move around with this is you really just click anywhere in it and drag. And this will rotate you around your scene. And if you need to zoom, you can use this magnifying glass right here. You click and drag and that will let you zoom. And then the same here with this hand, it will let you pan if you click and drag. Now the cons of this method is that it's just really slow and if you have well, any size to your scene really, it's just gonna take you forever to navigate around your scene. But the pros of this one, and I think this really translates well to, you know, whether you have a mouse or not, and that is if you click on one of these letters here, it will snap you to an exact view. So like if you need a top view, you just click this Z and we have been snapped to the top view. And you can see this right here in the top left where it says top orthographic, but this is the top view. And if you want the right, you just click that red X here and you can see that you were in the right. If you need the left side, then you just click that X again. So anytime you need to see the opposite of what it gave you, you just click that same thing again and it will flip you around. This Y will take you to the back 
and the front. And you know, I think that's the pro of this one where if you need just a really exact, precise, snapped in view, that's perfect for that. And as a bonus, if you click that tilde key again, like we learned in the last one, it will bring up kind of this pie menu of um, pretty much the same thing. We can go to the front view or we can go to the right view. And so I think if you need a very precise view, this is a great way to do it. However, I think moving around just in general, it's not really the best. So let's look at one more way to move around. All right, and then so the last way that we're gonna move around in Blender is by emulating a three button mouse. And the way that we do that is we're gonna come up here to edit, preferences and then make sure that we are in input and then also this option right here emulate three button mouse make sure that that one is checked and so what this is going to do is it's going to convert your two button mouse or your trackpad on your laptop into a mouse that has a scroll wheel a three button mouse and the way that it does that is by telling it that every time you hit the os key the command key for mac or an alt key if you're on a windows or a Linux, every time you click one of those, it's going to tell Blender that you are actually pressing down on the scroll wheel on a three button mouse. And so since I'm on Mac, I'm gonna leave this here to OS key, let's close that. And then every time I hit the command and hold it, and then left click, I can rotate around. So this is command and left click, or alt and left click if you are on Windows or Linux. And then if you do command and shift, or alt and shift, and then left click, and drag, that is going to be pan. And then command and control and left click or alt and control and left click, that is going to be zooming in and out. And so if you're using a two button mouse, like I am for this demonstration, I'm using an Apple Magic Mouse. Um, it's not too bad. It is kind of annoying to have to hit command and shift and all those buttons all the time, but I think you'd probably get used to it. If all you had was a trackpad though, um, I would suggest using walk mode. This method is terrible with a trackpad. I tried it and I wanted to give up. <laughs> it was awful. Um, it's almost unusable in my opinion, but it's just my opinion. You can try them out for yourself and see which one works best for you. All right, and then one last thing that I just wanna briefly talk about because this is something that a lot of people will suggest if you're on a laptop or you have a smaller keyboard, like if you're on an iMac like I am, and that is to emulate your numpad. Now, the numpad is this small set of keys over on the right side of a full-size keyboard, and it's got things like decimal point and numbers and enter and plus and minus, and all of these keys have a specific keyboard shortcut assigned to them, and most of them have to do with camera angles. And so if you wanna turn this on, the way that you do that is you come up here to edit, go down to preferences, and then make sure you're in input. And then up here on the top, this is emulate numpad, and you can click this right here. However, if you do that, it will take your numpad and it will assign all those keys to keys that are already on your keyboard, and it will overwrite those keyboard shortcuts. So I'm gonna turn this off and I'll show you. If I come into edit mode, we can see all these vertices. And that is because I am in vertex select mode. And the keyboard shortcut for this is one. Now, if I wanna come over here to edge select and then be able to select edges while I am editing, that keyboard shortcut is two. And if I want to select faces, that keyboard shortcut is three. And if I emulate numpad, it's gonna overwrite those three keys. And this is really annoying. And I think that when you're modeling, it's much more important to be able to switch quickly between different uh, selection types than it is to have a locked on view of like top view or side view or whatever, especially since we just learned that if you click on tilde, you can bring up this little pie menu and get all the same options just like that. So I think this is a much, much better way. And personally for me, I would much rather leave my keyboard alone and not emulate a numpad and overwrite all those really important keyboard shortcuts. All right, I hope that helps guys. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments and I will do my best to get back to you with an answer. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and until next time, we'll see you later.